model SX405 traction splint has been designed for rapid one-person assembly and application. The splint can be assembled and applied in under two and a half minutes. To assemble the splint, simply unfold and secure into place. The splint's unique semi-attached design ensures that no major parts will be lost or incorrectly assembled. Step one, remove and unfold the outer shaft assembly. Step two, remove, unfold and lock the inner shaft assembly. Step three, insert the inner shaft assembly into the outer shaft assembly. The splint is now ready to apply. Position the Sager SX405 between the patient's legs, resting the ischial perineal cushion or saddle against the ischial tuberosity with the shortest end of the articulating base towards the ground. In the case of a unilateral fracture, the splint should be placed in the perineum on the side of the injury. In bilateral fractures, excluding pelvic trauma, the side with the greatest degree of injury should be the side of placement. Apply the abductor bridle or thigh strap around the upper thigh of the fractured limb. Push the ischial perineal cushion gently down while at the same time pulling the thigh strap laterally under the patient's thigh. This will seat the articulating base and lower end of the cushion comfortably against the ischial tuberosity. Tighten the thigh strap lightly. Lift the spring clip to extend the inner shaft on the SX405 until the crossbar rests adjacent to the patient's heels. Note the absence or presence of distal pulses. Check for sensation. Position the malleolar harness or ankle harness beneath the heels and just above the ankles. Fold down the number of comfort cushions needed to engage the ankle above the medial and lateral malleoli. Using the attached hook and loop straps, Wrap the ankle harness around the ankle to secure snugly. Pull the control tabs to engage the ankle harness tightly against the crossbar. Apply quantifiable dynamic traction. Grasp the padded shaft of the SX405 with one hand and the red traction handle with the other. Then, gently extend the inner shaft until the desired amount of traction is recorded on the traction scale. It is suggested to use 10% of the patient's body weight per fractured femur, up to 7 kilograms or 15 pounds for each leg. If bilateral fractures are present, the maximum amount would be 14 kilograms or 30 pounds. At the hollow of the knees, gently slide a large tensor cravat through and upwards to the thigh. Leave it laying flat. Again, gently slide a smaller cravat under the hollow of the knee and seesaw it downward to the calves lay it flat. Finally, take a third tensor cravat and insert it under the hollow of the knees. Lay it flat. As with any device that uses hook and loop fasteners, the cravats may engage on carpet unless care is taken during application. When you insert the cravats under the knee, the hook half of the Velcro fastener faces up on the end of the cravat being inserted. The loop half of the Velcro fastener, therefore, will trail and face down and will not stick to the carpet. Adjust the abductor bridle or thigh strap at the upper thigh, making sure that it is not too tight, but snug and secure. Make sure that it does not impair circulation. Next, firmly secure the tensor cravats. Apply the pedal pinion or figure eight strap around the feet to prevent rotation. Note the absence or presence of distal pulses and check for sensation. Record the amount of traction applied and the presence of pulses. The patient is now ready for transport. Seifer's SX405 Extreme Compact Bilateral Emergency Traction Splints should be applied to all patients with suspected or confirmed fractured femurs. It can be applied to children and adults in the case of unilateral or bilateral fractures. The Sager SX405 can be quickly and easily applied by one attendant freeing the second attendant for other patients or procedures. Sager SX405 Traction Splint, state of the art for field treatment of fractured femurs, now part of your complete fracture response system. Seifer's model SX405 Traction Splint comes complete with all accessories required for use. The ischial perineal cushion or saddle, the abductor bridle or thigh strap, the carry case, the splint proper, the tensor cravat kit, the pedal pinion or figure eight strap, and the malleolar harness set or ankle harness set. Seifer's compact kit has been designed to treat any limb fracture in the human body without traction. 
It features rapid one-person assembly and two-person application. The unit can be assembled and applied in under 60 seconds. Seifer's unique design ensures virtually pain-free application. Seifer's compact kit treats any limb fractures in the human body without traction. The Seifer's adapter is lightly placed and centered over the fracture site with the arms aligned with each side of the fracture. The adapter is locked to retain the fracture configuration, then removed and attached to the padded splint shafts. Seifer's is an excellent device for extrication. When the splint is in place, it remains within the silhouette of the injured limb. There are no extraneous parts to hang up or impede when extricating the patient. For use as a traction device on mid-shaft and proximal third femur fractures only, please follow the three-step assembly and application procedure of position, set, and secure for the SX404 and SX405 Sager Extreme Compact Bilateral Emergency Traction Splint. The variable range Seifer's adapter is rotatable from 30 to 330 degrees, both horizontally and vertically. With color-coded extenders in place, the adapter adjusts to a maximum size of 20 inches in length. The adjustable length enables you to splint the 95th percentile of patients. The soft closed cell foam pad on the outer shaft and extenders will not absorb fluids and is easily cleaned. Seifer's is easy to assemble and easy to apply. To ensure correct application and usage, we have broken the assembly down into 11 basic steps. Press the button latch and remove the issual perineal cushion or saddle from the outer shaft and store it in the Seifer's case. Use Seifer's for treatment of all other fractures without traction. Turn each of the adapter knobs counterclockwise to unlock each of the rotatable arms. Unlock this knob. Note that one full 360 degree rotation or turn will be sufficient to make any adjustment you need. Unlock this knob. Place the loose and malleable adapter on the fracture as shown. Make sure the arms of the device lay parallel, centered, and in line with the arms of the proximal and distal parts of the fractured limb. Lock the adapter arms, making sure the teeth are aligned by turning the knobs tightly clockwise. If the teeth are not meshed and aligned and then locked into place, failure of the setting may occur. Separate the two halves of the outer shaft as shown. The unit should separate no more than 11 inches apart. Insert the long arm of the adapter into the large hole in the outer shaft as shown. Insert the remaining or shortest arm of the adapter into the other half of the outer shaft as shown. Hook the bungee cords over the knobs to move them out of the way. Seifer's is now ready to apply to the fracture. Depending on patient size, extender shafts can be added to lengthen the device as needed. Follow the color codes for exact placement, black to black, red to red. Place the prepared splint on the fractured limb. Apply the tensor cravats as shown. Note that in some situations, if there is room, the splint can be applied below the knee laterally or on either side of the knee. Patient is now ready for extrication and transport. After clearing the obstruction with the jaws of life, position the splint in preparation for extraction splinting of the limb in position found. Place tensor cravats as needed for stability. If the ankle or limb is still unstable, SAM splints can be used in conjunction with Seifer's figure eight straps for additional immobilization and support. When splinting with Seifer's, create a six to 10 degree valgus on the distal half of the splint and lock the device in place. This ensures that no stress or force is placed on the peroneal nerve, which is located around the base of the fibular head. Apply tensor cravats as needed. Make sure that the cravat is added distal to the head of the fibula to avoid compression of the peroneal nerve. Bent knee injuries can be splinted with Seifer's in anterior, lateral, or posterior positions. Place tensor cravats as shown to immobilize the knee. Please note that a traction splint is contraindicated in any knee injury. Proper leg splinting dictates that injuries at the knee should be splinted in position found. Attempt to straighten a bent knee 
is only advised if pulses are absent and leg straightening is done without pain or resistance to movement. Here is the splint position for a fracture dislocation of the knee. Place two tensor cravats above the knee and three below the knee. The knee is now immobilized. Here is the splint position for an ankle injury. Place two tensor cravats around the patient's calf and a third cravat around the foot. Splint a dislocated shoulder in the position found. Apply tensor cravats around the patient's waist and lower chest. Apply remaining cravats around the extended injured arm. Here is the splint position for a fractured elbow. Note that the extender shaft can be rotated to fit in the palm of the hand. Place one tensor cravat above the fractured elbow and two cravats below the fracture. A third cravat can be added as needed to secure the hand to the extender shaft. Here is an anterior view of placement of Seifers for a forearm injury. Note that in forearm injury, the Seifers ischial perineal cushion can be attached to the splint for additional comfort and stability. Place a wide tensor cravat over the upper arm and a wide cravat over the lower arm. Elbow injuries should be splinted in the position found. After securing the device with the tensor cravats as needed, a long two inch wide cravat can be placed around the neck and shoulder for additional stability. Splint a fractured wrist, forearm or elbow like this. Place a long two inch wide cravat around the neck and the injured limb as a sling for additional stability and immobilization. Seifers SX405M and C come complete with all accessories required for use. One SX405M or C Sager Extreme Compact Bilateral Emergency Traction Splint. One Ischial Perineal Cushion or Saddle. One Abductor Bridle or Thigh Strap. One Compact Carrying Case. One Pedal Pinion or Figure 8 Strap. Two Malleolar Harnesses or Ankle Harness Set. One SX405 Seifers Adapter. Two Color-Coded SX405 Extender Shafts. One set of two-inch tensor cravats. Set includes four variable lengths. One set of four-inch tensor cravats. Set includes four variable lengths. One set of six-inch tensor cravats. Set includes four variable lengths. One red end cap and one black end cap. Two 36-inch C-curve SAM splints. Five SAM finger splints. Seifers folds into a 14 by 11 by 5 inch carry case. The case can be easily stored or carried in most backpacks. To keep your Seifers ready for use, follow this simple packing sequence. Place the 12 various size tensor cravats in the mesh sleeves attached to the bottom of the case. Next, place the folded outer splint shaft on the top of the tensor cravats, like this. The inner shaft is next. Place the folded inner splint shaft with attached ankle harness next to the outer shaft on top of the tensor cravats. Seifers adapter, SAM finger splints, shaft extenders and end caps are placed in the front mesh pocket. Zip it closed. The two C-curve SAM splints should be rolled and placed in the attached mesh container. Flip the container down into the case. Use the Velcro retaining straps to secure the contents in place. Zip the Seifers carry case closed. Seifers compact size makes it easy to store in most transport compartments. Alternatively, Seifers can be attached to the side of a soft wall of your transport vehicle that hooked Velcro will stick to. The hooked Velcro is on the back side of the Seifers carry case. Seifers is now stored and ready for its next application.